Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Wednesday, January 18th, 2017 edition of VR News. Wednesday hump day almost over, bringing the weekend that much closer. But let's start today's VR News with what we've been talking about the last week or so, and that's the ZeniMax versus Oculus trial that is taking place in Dallas, Texas. It doesn't matter if you're into law or hell not into law, whether it's criminal or civil, the fact of the matter is the results of this trial are going to have a massive impact on the future of virtual reality. There's no doubt. And these types of cases happen all the time and they go to trial quite frequently. We hear about them usually when it's, you know, bigger companies involved, like your Apples, but usually not to the same degree as this one is currently being followed. Part of that has to do with the, you know, massive price tag of the acquisition uh, and other factors. It just doesn't happen very often. So we're in a unique position with essentially ringside seats to get in on this. And I know for me personally, just from that historical point of view and the fact that it is going to be an important decision, yeah, it's just interesting as hell for me to follow. Now, yesterday, Mark Zuckerberg took to answering ZeniMax lawyer questions. Today, Palmer Lucky's turn. Now, uncharacteristically, and very much like Mark, because it was uncharacteristic for him, Palmer showed up in a suit and red tie. And ZeniMax, look, they're spending most of their effort, the thing they're trying to get across in this trial, it pretty much their entire case rests on this, is how much Carmack, his knowledge and his resources, and by extension, ZeniMax's resources, figured into the development of the device we know today is the Oculus Rift. Their whole case rests on that essentially. And that accounting differs from the one that, you know, we've publicly known for the last few years. The whole Palmer Lucky, you know, having an interest in VR, looking at those older devices of the 90s and tinkering around, and he had numerous prototypes he worked with. So obviously, Oculus, their defense is going to be, no, you know, Carmack assisted, but his assistance was in a different form. And some of that, you know, we're going to see kind of where they're going with the defense today. But we certainly know where ZeniMax is going, and there was definitely more of that today. They really focused in on Palmer Luckey's relationship with Carmack and the initial contributions that Carmack may or may not have made towards the Oculus Rift. So, for example, the one that we've been told is, you know, he developed this on his own, in his garage, etc., and that he sent Carmack a headset in 2012, one of those early prototypes, and it's that headset that kind of became central to the questioning. So, in terms of what Carmack contributed. So the lawyers asked Lucky if Carmack had created the Rift's fisheye distortion system used to create a panoramic image that seems to wrap around the user inside the headset. His response was, I guess what he did is a solution rather than the solution. And when I said we're going to get glimpses of what Oculus Defense is going to be, I think this response was perfect. Because what he's in, a, in fact saying is, you know what? It was a solution. It wasn't the solution. There's numerous ways to go about this. And what's probably going to come out is that so much of the underlying technology existed in the decades previous to you know, these modern devices coming to market. They're probably going to talk about units like the VFX-1, which played 
the first System Shock game back in 1994, albeit at VGA resolution, the fundamentals were all in place with that device. Even the distortion back then that they talk about wrapping around you, what wasn't in place obviously was the graphical processing speed and CPU processing speed that we have now or the resolution. So that was an interesting response. They also talked about that famous appearance by Carmack, which was one of those where he droned on for about 90 minutes, two hours without a break, bio or otherwise. It's when he had that prototype showing the BFG Doom 3 edition. So they honed in on that and they asked directly about that demo and if it would not have been possible without Carmack software. Palmer replied, I guess you could call it a breakthrough moment in awareness. And again, I think this is what the defensive strategy is going to be that look, yes, Carmack had important contributions, but a lot of that was simply public exposure. That event, that E3 appearance, probably did more to put virtual reality kind of in the public sphere of discussion than anything else, Kickstarter or otherwise. So I thought that was a really strategic and interesting answer. Now, ZeniMax, of course, they alleged that that whole history, like I said, that we know is utterly and completely false, that Lucky lacked training expertise, resources, or know-how to create commercially, uh, commercially viable VR technology. They also say he made no substan substantial contribution to the creation of the Rift. When I talked about yesterday with um, viewer Jiwa's contribution with that link, that is where they could bring that up and say, you know what? No, he was a technical person. Here he is, you know, USC, working with this technology. Here are the prototypes he worked with. So I think that's the direction they're going to go. Either way, guys, super fascinating, even from the sidelines. Definitely going to be following this right to the, right to the end. Now, Next news story ties into this, a nugget from yesterday that didn't really get reported on much was the acquisition cost of Oculus for Facebook. The figure we've always heard was $2.3 billion. Two reporters at the trial both heard this, one of them being Mike Isaacs from the New York Times, where Zuckerberg in a line of questioning said, we bought the company for about $2 billion, had additional $700 million in retention for key folks, $300 million earn out for milestones. Now, as the writer explained, and I can second, as I've experienced acquisitions in my you know, professional life, that is pretty standard, especially with executives and especially with key engineers if, you know, it's an engineered product, the intellectual property, the know-how, those are key people to retain during an acquisition. Those are the ones that drive that part of the acquisition cost. So that's interesting because that 700 million additional dollars brings it up to 3 billion, which, I mean, that's 30% more than what they talked about. So very interesting. How many more nuggets are going to come out of this trial like that? Now, next news story, VR live streaming to Facebook, now supported by NVIDIA GeForce Experience software. The update was released on January 9th. It's the Experience 3.2.2.49 update. And it was something that they showed at CES 2017, just didn't get reported much. Now, it will broadcast to Facebook, but it's only going to do it at 720p, and it's non-interactive at this point, meaning it's one-way streaming, viewer, watching only. There's no way to interact a la Twitch or YouTube with your viewers at this point. You're also going to be able to broadcast higher than 720 if it's to a 4K-capable TV set, for example. So, uh, also, you're going to be able to share 360-degree screenshots. 
Next news story, Valve confirms the new Vive base stations coming this year. Now, just like with the court case and the acquisition cost, this came out of some other news, and that was Gabe Newell's Reddit AMA that he did yesterday. One of the engineers on staff, uh, Valve's Joe Ludwig, he was basically asked about... Uh, the development of a manufacturing line for the new base stations that they had talked about at the Steam's Dev Days. And we talked about it here on the new show as well. Uh, it was the one that was going to, you know, go from two motors to one. So instead of having two beams, a horizontal and a vertical, it was going to be two slightly angled beams, essentially the same algorithm, the same tracking precision, but a cut down in component two to one which also has the nice effect of reducing the cost because those lighthouses are a significant portion of the cost. 135 bucks each, 270 of the $800 price tag is those tracking stations. So uh, here's what he said specifically about that, about the automated manufacturing. He said, the controller production line is still going strong, churning out controllers. The next line we're building is for the base stations we talked about at Dev Days. Using automation allows us to keep production local, which means our employees can be much more hands-on with the manufacturing process. That works a lot better with how Valve works, so we'll probably keep doing that going forward. And I should have some pictures up here just to show those again and highlight those. And as it indicates in those pictures you see the reduction from two to one and you know on paper you'd think that that was a reduction in half of cost we won't know yet until they're actually out and for sale but interesting that they confirmed that they are coming this year now this next news story is from venture beat and it's mit launching a play labs program to help virtual reality augmented reality and artificial intelligence startups get off the ground and the person responsible for this is rizwan verk he's an mit alum and uh it was a program that he wishes they had around when he was going through the ranks so it's an accelerator program it's going to target students and alumni to offer funding facilities and mentorship resources for the selected startups. Applications open now and end February 20th. It's uh, the actual program. The first batch of co uh, companies are going to go from June 2017 to August 2017. So this summer, essentially, why they've got that February 20th deadline. And... Startups that get accepted into the Play Labs program are going to receive an initial investment of 20,000 US. And then if they successfully graduate and meet certain criteria that they've got set up that they haven't announced yet, an additional $80,000 US. So potential $100,000 US. You know, it's these types of incentive programs, uh, investment, whatever you want to call it, that is just going to help ensure, you know, regardless of how the commercial side sells, VR is here at least for the next few years. This isn't going to be a situation like the Dreamcast or the Vita where it's quickly come and quickly go, even if it ends up, unfortunately for all of us, you know, being the negative storyline. And the last news story, this one, Amazon and I get that things take time to plan among executives I just would have thought this would be something they would have jumped on a lot quicker but unlike the music industry at least they're jumping on it now what the hell am I talking about epics is an article from variety.com they found a job placement from Amazon on LinkedIn that is basically hinting at plans for virtual reality shopping apps. The, the ad specifically states that they are looking for a creative director, virtual reality, whose tasks include to envision the future of Amazon's VR solutions and guide our creative and technical teams to produce compelling 
world-class experiences. So like I said, that would have been something you would have thought we'd probably hear. You know, they talk about it amongst themselves, put a plan in place, then hire somebody. You know, you would have thought the second half of 2016. But who knows? At least they're doing it. It's one of those things. I order a lot of stuff on Amazon. One of my common complaints is it's just hard to get a sense of scale of items, right? I get that we can't touch things, but look at the green screen kit that I purchased. I still don't have a video up from, but even though you get the measurements online, you get pictures, putting on your HMD and being able to stand right beside the product, actually have it set up and be able to examine it. How high do the tripods go? All that kind of stuff. Perfect for VR and complemented by things like augmented reality for trying stuff on or seeing that green screen kit in your actual living space. So all kinds of potential there. Uh, glad to see Amazon, you know, at least looking down that path. So very good news indeed. All right, guys, that is it for the news. Cheers as always. Like I said, hope you guys have a kick-ass tail end of the week. Cheers and definitely catch you guys on the VR flip side.